By chance, I have been here in Da Nang for over two months this year so far. It has been a really, really amazing experience that I have no expectation before I came here. This video, I'm gonna share with you why I love Da Nang and also a few points that I think you should be mindful about uh, living in Da Nang. The first point, the cost of living versus the quality of life. There have been a lot of popular videos about the cost of living in Da Nang with around 1,000 US dollars per month and I'm a good testimony for that as well. For example, currently I'm staying in a hotel for over one month in a very central location right in front of a bread and butter uh, which is a very popular cafe and the cost is slightly less than $500 and then with uh, food, groceries, drinks and uh, entertainment activities I really managed to live here for one month with good balance of everything for less than $1,000 US dollars. Of course if you want to enjoy luxury there are also a lot of opportunities for you to experience the upscale side of uh, living in Danan. For example, recently, Danan has been covered by Michelin Guide and there's even one, one Michelin star restaurant in Danan. And it's very easy that uh, I can have a coffee for less than one dollar and then sit in the cafe for half day, even the whole day, if you will, with air conditioning, with very beautiful interior design, together with other, you know, digital nomads as well. That's something really stands out for Danan and I hope it will stay like this. The second point, which I think is very important, is that local people are very genuine and seem to be very happy about their life. The interactions I have with local people are mainly from, you know, going to the cafe, going to the restaurant, and I become regular to them. For example, even go to my usual cafes for work. In the morning when I come in, the cashier recognizes me. I don't even have to order my drink. She immediately said, you want iced black coffee without sugar, <laughs> right? And, we both, and then we both laughed. I was like, wow. To this point, a really nice feeling and also in restaurants as well. I have my go-to place. Those owners or waiters always recognize me. They give me my euro spot. They know what I want to order. In general, I feel like it's not as transactional as some other destinations. I feel like people are really genuine during the interactions with me. Based on my personal experiences, I feel like uh, Vietnamese people are super content with their life as outsider uh, viewing this. Even walking on the beach, you can see people doing exercises, doing dancing together and family, you know, playing the sand, the water. It's very simple. You may say, okay, is there so much fun just to dig the sand and put on on your body but every day all the families uh, the, the parents the couples they go there to do that they seem to really enjoy themselves because the, the smiles they, they put on their face and uh, i like to be in a place that i know the local people are happy about their life next point expat community one thing i really appreciate Anna, is that there are so many international citizens let's say digital nomads and people from everywhere it becomes a kind of popular uh, digital nomad my destination, although it's still not as overcrowded as Bali, a lot of digital nomads that I encountered, they said they didn't know Da Nang before, but somehow because their personal research in YouTube, word of mouth, they find out, okay, maybe Da Nang is a good try. So then they came over, they decide to stay longer. And similar stories I have heard many times somehow make me feel a sense of a community, a sense of belonging. Just, you know, going to the cafe, working on your table, and then knowing that your neighbors are also so in a similar situation, being a digital nomad, it feels great. I think local people also embrace us foreigners quite well. The next point is the food diversity. As mentioned, there are 36 restaurants listed in Michelin Guides this year, which is a big recognition for the food scenes in Da Nang. And it's not only about the Vietnamese cuisines, but also international kitchens as well. Good pizzas, good burgers, good French restaurants. So whatever you're craving for, it's very likely that you can find very good uh, offerings in Da Nang. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, missing your home food. And then, of course, the price is uh, quite accessible. If you want to go for fine dining, there are also very upscale restaurants as well. Check out my video for the food recommendation. Next, nature. This is so unique for Da Nang. You might have heard that Mikai Beach in Da Nang has been voted as one of the top six beaches in the world by Forbes. It is truly, truly beautiful and impressive. The sandy beach super long you can literally walk one and one half hours non-stop and one of my favorite activities is to walk alongside the beach when the sun is about to go down i often spend around like two hours in the evening walking back and forth sometimes
time sitting on the sand and see people playing around and also a lot of water sports as well to see people doing the paragliding with the boat also there are quite a few mountains very close by so if you are tired of the beach you can take a ride to the mountain i even took a trekking tour with my friends exploring the peninsula with the red faced monkey which is very a very rare one in the world also encountered even cobra the snake it's a very unique experience it's like a utopia the nature really stands out for Dana. i cannot say enough to describe the beauty of it you have to come here to experience it or check out the video of my crazy 24 hour in Dana. next one activities so sometimes if you're a foreigner or outsider or you go to a place for the first time you may feel a bit uh, disconnected with uh, the local life luckily in Danan, since there are a lot of uh, foreigners living here there are a lot of uh, english-based activities language exchange board games bar crawling frisbee on the beach so there are a lot of things on offer that you just need to throw yourself out there and uh, have fun together and meet new friends and that's how i started building my network here in Danan as well that's through you know this kind of activities you have your starting kit or your friend circle and then you become friends with your friends friends and that you know that's how you make the place your home in a way or to make yourself feel more integrated into the local community next one efficiency and speed i think that's probably a signature for a developing country in terms of the speed which truly impressed me for example i live in a very kind of busy area right next to bread and butter and on the opposite side of the street there's empty space and within a few weeks, they converted the empty space into a new cafe, the Highlands chain. And a few days ago, they just opened it. That's like a lightning speed before I realize it because it's right in front of my window as well. In the Mikai beach, there's a park area where there are always activities going on. It's literally one event after another and they change it so fast. One day it's totally empty, uh, the square, and then the next day they set up all kind of stands and a stage to get ready for the next big events. The efficiency and the speed is really unbeatable. You really feel the positive energy going on. Last but not the least, safety. Sometimes when you are in a foreign country, especially a country that you don't know the local language, you may feel a little bit uh, worried about safety. But here in Danan, that's the last thing you have to worry about. Maybe I exaggerated a little bit, you know, certainly you don't want to just leave your wallet on the table that probably a bit of a stretch otherwise when i work in the cafe sometimes you know i need to use the bathroom so i have to leave my laptop my personal belongings or on my seat it happened many times that i did that and i'm always able to find back my stuff out there it's also something highlighted by the other digital nomads as well so in general it's quite safe out here so now move on to three things that you need to be mindful of number one traffic i think it's something quite typical in other major cities as well in vietnam like hanoi or ho chi minh city it can be very busy on the road even if when there is traffic light still cross the street can be a very daunting experience with all the cars motorbikes coming at you but you just have to be brave and follow the rhythm don't rush keep a step pace watch out as much as you can and you will get used to it people horn a lot here it's almost feel like uh, everybody thinks they have the priority to drive across the street like the, no matter it's a car motorbike a scooter or a bicycles so just be careful about the traffic here but you will be fine the second point is about the rental market so i've been here twice and twice i tried to use different uh, platforms to find my accommodation airbnb for example in general my experience is like it's very much inflated the price and oftentimes what you get or what you are viewing is not the same as what you saw in the ads and the price may even twice or three times of the local rental price i viewed a few through the airbnb platforms and i decided to ditch that and resort to Facebook apartment rental groups as well as my personal connections with a local agent still you know even in Facebook groups the water can be very deep quite a few times I have seen very nice ads I want to really view that that particular apartment but then once I met the person who advertised it somehow I was brought to other units or other properties not the one that I saw in the ad and then they just apologized saying you know they didn't know the room was occupied etc so you know just be careful 
careful. It's sometimes it can be very unpleasant. Just make sure that you have your bottom line. And uh, you know, normally the supply is very much more than the demand here. If you live a few days before you decide your accommodation, you will give yourself a lot of leeway to find a good place to your liking. If you don't want to reach out to the person who posted the advertisement, you can post your own ad saying what are the areas or locations you are interested in and what's your budget and whether it's all inclusive or you have some range of your budget and then normally some people will contact you and then based on your personal judgment and the interactions you can make a, a sensible decision yourself and then you know start your viewings i think within a few days even up to one week i'm pretty sure you can find a very decent place to stay for a bit longer term the last point is about the food hygiene some of the little stands of street food for example the hygiene may not be the highest your body probably will get used to it but there were a few times that uh, i had the diarrhea after i had the street food it's very cheap it's like 20k 30k uh, vietnamese doll like you know less than one dollar it's a good experience the food tastes good just you know my body is not used to some ingredients or sauce probably and then i had quite a horrible <laughs> diarrhea but it didn't happen all the time it happened a few times so just be careful when you choose place to eat have a bit of a uh, personal judgment as well so this is my point of view about uh, what I like and something to be mindful about living in Da Nang. So what do you think about this point? Do you agree with them? Or you think I have missed something? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I hope my personal experiences will give you some insights about what to expect to stay and live in Da Nang. To me this is really a hidden gem that I almost want to hold on to it to myself. I really have an amazing time living here. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!